Hello people, Feet here. Today I will walk you through my recruiting process all the way from early to late game. Now my goal when I recruit bros is to assemble an Avenger level company that can smash everything in their path. In order to do that, you will need many good bros. And to acquire that many good bros, you'll need time and gold too. Most of my runs last about 300 days and I often complete the team around day 150 to 200. However, I don't stop recruiting after that. I keep trying out bros, looking for the best of the best. Okay, when I hire bros, I usually categorize them into three groups. First one are the plebs. These guys are for the early game. And stat-wise, they don't need much at all. Um, I go for about 75 to 85 attack and maybe 10 to 20 defense is fine for me the reason we don't need that much attack and defense for them is because we're going to use some perks to give them more hit chance so they can hit things and early on enemy aren't that strong so we don't need to go two handers or duelists to kill them we can go shields or if they have good defense we can go for two hand but we're going to position them more safely all right notable builds for the plebs are stunner who just need a bit of attack to stun things. Frontline thrower, if they have a bit of range skill too. And if they have both decent attack and defense, we can go for either nimble or fat neutral two-hander. All right, next tier are for the good bros. These guys are for mid to late game. And Right, some of them will be closer to the plebs, so we're gonna use them for mid game. Otherwise, if they have a lot of potential, we can go for late game and beyond. For attack, anywhere between 85 all the way to 95 are good. And for defense, I want to go for at least 25 to 35, right? So these, right, if you find someone with 85, 95 early on, they aren't that much better than the plebs, right? But with some written levels in there, they will, you know, get there, especially when you find them early. They're going to have time to get those written levels, so they're going to get there. And later on, you want to look for people that are a little bit, bad, little bit better, right? With bros like these, we can go for Battleforge, either Fat Neutral for the low end, or the Berserk for the high, higher end. We can also look for Fencers and Dagger Duelists here, if they have good initiative. If you find a bro with really good defense but no attack, we can also go for tank too, right? So these are the good bros that will make up the bulk of your team for the mid late game, right? And the final tier are reserved for the what I call the god bros or the premium bros. These are for the end game and you don't need them to beat the game but being overpowered is fun, right? And their stat will definitely be good but they don't need to be that good because their main power will come from traits right and even if their stats aren't the best but if their traits are really good you definitely want to invest some written levels in there and if they have good stats and good traits then that's how you get a god bro right these bros will also go for battle force berserk or fencer you know those high-end builds but they will just be stronger because of their traits and their stats right all right this is my anatomy save that i play for 350 days and I gave myself a lot of money so that we can go and buy bros and check them out today First of all, I got the Dagger Duelist, right? Huge iron lungs. Low attack, but doesn't matter, right? Because, you know, look at the traits. So this is typical god bros here. Not the best attack, but the trait makes up for it. Extremely high defense at least though, you know, that helps. And then we got the two hand cleaver build. He has strong, which is a nice trait for sure. Extremely high attack, which is awesome for a cleaver. Now his fatigue is still a bit low here even though he has strong but I could go for Nimble Forge here for him if I want him to have a bit more stamina to play with. Next up I got a Lightning Sword Bro with a shield right. You can go do this too but giving this guy a shield is a decent way to fix his low defense right. He is fat so he doesn't have that much fatigue even though we got 2 stars wow. But hey he will lose the fat at some point. And death, which means that he's immune to fearsome and morale check from losing HP, which is really nice. And he still has room to grow, right? He's only level 13 right now. 
Alright, so Nate is a fencer. Not the best stars, but really good traits, right? Another god bro here. Doesn't even have initiative, but hey, right. <laughs> Nothing a couple dozen version level can fix. Also, I'm playing anatomy, so I can afford to be a bit wacky with my build because the potion can make up for it. Alright, I got an orc cleaver duelist because the anatomist can go for orc weapons. Just good attack, very high defense. Good enough fatigue in general. Alright, Shalin P is a maze duelist. Um, decent trait, not amazing. I don't love Paranoid that much, but you know, attack and defense are both good. So this guy might not be a god bro, but he is definitely high end of the good ones, right? Uh, another one is Battleforge Dodge Flail, alright? I went for this build because this guy got Brutes, right? With a good Flail and Brutes, it can be really surprising how much damage he can deal when he headshot enemies well. He only has 24 defense, but that's why we go for the Battleforge Dodge build. I wanna slap, maybe slap a dodge armor onto him. So that he has more defense in battle. This much initiative is gonna give him maybe 35 defense in battle. Alright, Frey is another cleaver boy. He has very high attack, which is typical for a cleaver build for me. It's not like they can't have high defense, but they can have low defense and still function well because they can have a whip so they can play more defensively if the fights are scary. So this guy is one of the lower end good bros that I think he gained drunkard so I decided to keep him for the late game. So he's a low end guy that I find early and now he is on par with the early high ends, right? Okay, another one that I found not too long ago I suppose is an iron lung war side, right? Mm. When I find a really good bros, right, later on, with extremely high attack but unusable defense in the front line, I, so I either go for war side or I go for shield, lightning sword. This guy is an archer. Now, good archer is very easy to find. All you to do is just keep buying hunters until you find one that has good range skill. That's all. This guy is also an archer, but he has tiny survival. Not that special, but hey, for an archer, all you need is range skill. Alright, that's a banner. I buy him for his extremely high resolve, a little bit of melee skill, and decent defense. I like to go for tanky banner so that they can rotate my bros out of trouble. Alright, back here I got a drunkard athletic cell sword. Is that a war side again? Okay, I have two war side here because this guy defense is not the best, but he does have the damage. Now, his defense is a bit worse right now, right, because of this, but he has maybe. 20, 25. Alright, next is Brandly. Brandly is a Butterforce Maze Dagger build. I don't often build this anymore, right? This guy could have been anything else too. So this guy definitely belongs to the Good Bro camp. I could have built Fatigue Neutral. I could have built, you know, um, Maze Duelist tool if I didn't have a Maze Duelist all, like, already. Right, basically, uh, basically a Hedge Knight with some potential in attack and defense right can be anything that's another archer with decent range skill but i made him into a gunner instead all right that is a tank butterforce dodge tank that's a butterforce dodge two-hand hammer um decent defense with dodge on top right not bad a bit low on the hp though which is the case for butterforce dodge right you need to invest some hp some fatigue some resolve into that initiative Right, another fatigue neutral bro here. Another dodge fatigue neutral bro. Interesting. So the Butterforce dodge fatigue neutral bros, I keep for the later game because they have more defense than the normal uh, fatigue neutral variant, right? And over here, there's a caravan hand. If I'm still keeping a caravan hand, that must mean that I haven't gotten the caravan event yet in freaking 350 days. Now I'm gonna go through the cities and hire some bros and walk you through my thought process, right? But first, let me. Okay. Let me rebuy the recruiter. I usually buy this guy second or third. He reduces the hiring cost by 10%. So if you buy a Hedge Knight for 10k, he's, this guy saves you 1k right away. And the tryout cost only half. Alright, let's see. So if this was day one, right, I might be interested in some of the Thief for sure. I'll definitely buy the Thief. Um, early on, you want Thieves, Brawlers, Militias, if they're cheap. If we want early on, you want to buy some cheap, good backgrounds, yeah? So I would buy the 
if here for sure not sure if i would be interested in any other thing but sometimes you just need an, an extra body for maybe completing the ambition maybe unlocking the recruiter so i might pick up a cheap beggar too this guy is not even that cheap but i uh, buy him if i'm really desperate i would look for some of the day talent too as long as the attack can reach 57 i'm happy right so let's buy you this guy has a chicken trait right which means he's likely has the insecure well he doesn't have that but he has been hearted so no thank you if you see this right just avoid them if you can right so the thief is bad he doesn't have much going for him mean throw defense but he has some resolve right and early on if you don't have a banner yet this guy can be your banner you just need someone to hold the banner to unlock the ambition and then you can get yourself an, uh, another banner at some point right so that guy can't be much sadly this guy well he's not much either you know throw him in there let him die let him be a mid shield basically put a spear and a shield on him and just uh, let him tank and if he doesn't die and let get some levels maybe you can level up dodge uh, you know colossus gifted dodge maybe he can become a dodge tank maybe but this guy won't last long anyway if a lowborn bro has less than 55 attack with no stars i usually consider them not usable um this guy though he has some decent defense right away right eight and one star here actually not that bad very early on we can go maybe we can try to make him into a stunner we can try to make him into a early tank right so let's move on to the next town down in the southern cities right you can look for assassin you can look for cheap nomad and you can look for gladiators anything that can't reach 57 attack i usually don't bother with all right looks like i already try out this one this one is a nomad now they would be quite decent uh, early on i advise you to buy any nomad that costs less than 1.5k they are really good for the money this one um i was looking for some james the dirty i suppose but he has bad traits so i'm not gonna do that now oh also butcher are good for early game so let's buy some this guy's dumb 50 one star 50 one star basically means 55 no star each star means five attack right so not the greatest but you know early on if i find someone like this right i would go for a standard build a bit of attack decent hp decent resolve right put amazing shoe in there go colossus gifted backstabber maze mastery and you got a stunner this one actually has more attack than this one if you take attack every level so yeah maybe a stunner maybe a banner right only early on though not much later on at all okay another nomad that i try out early on you don't need to try out right early on just buy them if they are cheap enough just buy them all right let's buy this guy and see what he looks like and a cell sword all right just close your eyes and imagine i didn't try him out and for k go for a cell sword i wouldn't buy him early but let's check him out yeah if a cell sword costs less than 2.5k and a nomad costs less than 1.5k i buy them without showing them out especially early on all right this guy well sadly he's not much at all um low attack defense is not bad actually he, he can be a dagger i guess a dagger boy has very low requirement they don't have a, they don't need much attack because they attack three times per turn if they miss one is fine also if they miss everything they can still overwhelm and if their defense is low they have dodge to patch it up right so this guy can be an early dagger and the cell sword has actually almost max row melee skill max row defense with two stars quick and survivor a kind of low initiative he got 112 because of uh, the quick right for someone like this right almost max row attack without stars and 13 defense without stars first of all the 13 defense without star is definitely usable the attack well is also usable um you can expect 20 attack more if you invest everything into attack so he can reach 86 attack without gifted that qualifies for the good bros right you can go for battle force fat neutral you can go for dagger builds actually very good defense this initiative attack is not that low very close to this build right so not a bad recruit but a bit pricey 13 defense two star is no joke you know so you can be a tank too actually let's go there now 
Hey, we got a, a free oh, anatomist. Okay, this town doesn't have much. I usually don't buy Poacher early on because Hunter is just superior as an archer. Unless you are playing Peasant Militia. Now, early on, minor aren't bad at all. They have lower fatigue, but higher HP. And early game, HP is better than fatigue. Let's try one out and see how he goes. Alright, this guy has fat. And early on, I, I like fat actually, but he could also has gluttonous. Gluttonous, sadly. Well, he can be a banner. I think it's a bit low, right? I could try to make him into a stunner and things like that. But if I have a weak stunner, he might compromise the team later. This guy, hmm. Okay, interesting. So, anatomies are quite cheap, you know, depending on their armor. Sometimes they cost only five to 700 gold. If I find this guy early on, he's gonna be my thrower frontline build. We're gonna go javelins, we're gonna go backpack sword. Yeah, in the front line. I try to get to throwing mastery early. And then nimble and then do this ASAP to deal with humans like raiders, nomads, things like that. Very effectively on, but once archers start to spawn, and thank you, enemies start to spawn. He won't last that long in the front. This guy is strictly early on. All right, let's go here. Okay, another cheap sell sword, right? Cheaper than 2.5k, yeah? Let's pick him up here. I don't bother with a retired soldier because now they can be good, but you know, compared to some cheap sell sword, they are just worse. Oh, oh boy, oh boy. All right, we got a 62 one star. Not that high. 62 one star is barely better than 66 no star, yeah? But it just looks a bit better. Having the star that is just more eye pleasing. Alright, we got 12 defense, 2, 3 star here, that's awesome. Also, for someone like this, right, you will invest every level into attack and defense. So you only have one role left to patch up HP, fatigue, and resolve. And you need to do a decent amount of all of them, right? So don't worry about the secondary stats here that much you don't need to have two star in fatigue to go battle force clear example look at this guy right you don't need two star to in fatigue to go battle force because you want to spread that role into three stats anyway and to try to get to a balance balance amount anyway so if you just take the high roll each level for one of the stats in the end you will end up with a pretty well balanced bro and if you bro end up with a bit tiny bit low fatigue for now Better fame item and more fancy level can help fix it. If he's my first good bro, I will go Maze to this. I always uh, prioritize Maze to this because he's an endgame bro that can stun things. You need something strong to stun champions. Uh, even a fat neutral guy can, you know, do damage, but not everyone can stun. Early on, if I see a Graven Hand, um, less than 500, I will buy them. Also, 30 go for a warm body, I'll buy that too. This guy's a bit expensive, right? Maybe we'll think about buying him. Okay, horrible caravan hand. Yep. Probably not worth keeping, but maybe just get him to level 6, right? He has decent attack. With Dastard, you just need to rally with your banner first turn, which is not the worst, so... You know, give him a sword, give him a shield. Maybe get him a mace so he can stun, make him into a stunner. Get him to level 6, maybe 7, bench him until he make the crab and then kick him and yeah we don't need much from this guy right just a warm body yep nothing here the bros that you don't want right you don't have to kick them you can use them as distraction for your team you can use them as mid shield you can sh use them as a sh guy that can just tank a couple more hits and buy the team time to just you know mop up the rest usually i don't buy such an expensive militia he's expensive because he comes with a a pretty decent armor so if you're lacking some armor you know you can buy this guy too so let's see wow and you never know what you're gonna get right <laughs> um determine is a great trait here melee skill is good right almost max roll defense is good initiative is quite good wow i mean if i find someone like this this early i go fencer for him i always like an early fencer Otherwise, you can go for a typical two-hander. A fat neutral two-hand. It's always nice to have someone who can anchor your team, right? Some battle force guy early who can carry a great axe and just do the necessary damage. 
The fencer is very fancy. He won't be that strong until he get there, right? And until you get him a fencing sword. If I find this guy early and don't have any fencer candidate yet, I go fencer. Otherwise, he can be a really good two-hander. That might even grow into the late game like this one, for example. Awesome. <laughs> you never know what you want to find. I love it. The gamble. I can't stop. can't stop gambling. Alright. So, for someone like this though, I definitely won't buy, right? It's way too expensive for a uh, militia. Okay, so that's a pretty nice witch hunter. Not the cheapest because he has an expensive crossbow. And you want a witch hunter early on because they can give you a free fame crossbow. For all you know. So let's buy him. Not bad here, but you buy him for the event. So either you can go for just a crossbow build. You can go for a thrower frontline build. With a good resolve, you can go for temporary banner. You can go for, you know, stunner if you want. A star is not everything. Starting stats is also important, so he has, isn't enough. Attack, good HP. Not the worst, uh, let's say. If I see a hunter early on, I will buy him if I can spare the money. Okay, unfortunate. He min roll his brain skill. But even with that, he can still be a decent crossbowman. So it's pretty safe to just buy Hunter early on. They are quite cheap. And at worst, they are a usable crossbowman. At best, you get an awesome archer, yeah? If you want to, you can buy a cheap bow early, throw a crossbow at him, get him a level 6, and wait for the Master Wolf bow, right? Also, we got a Hedge Knight early on here. I would buy this one early if I have the gold. If I don't have the gold, I would try to get the gold to get him. At worst, you get some decent armor uh, and a great sword, and probably an able body. All right, hired. Now, I wouldn't be disappointed if I get this one, right? Not real. I just blew seven k on him. If he had a great axe, that would be a lot better, or a big mace that would be a lot better too. I don't like great sword that much, but I hey, usable weapon early on. So his trait aren't really that great. Night blind is kind of bad. Quick doesn't help a hedge knight at all. But what he does have is almost max row HP. Max row melee seal with one star. I would go 200 for this one. You know what? I think this is the perfect chat potential fatigue neutral here. We're gonna go extremely high HP fatigue neutral, bro. With good attack and decent defense. Now, this is me keeping my standard a bit high here. This guy can actually be a two hand cleaver too, right? He has good enough attack. His defense is not the best, but look at this one, right? Yeah, they are like the same. So, good attack, not the best defense. Pretty good secondary stats. So, if I lower my standard, he can be a 200 cleaver. If my standard is high, I can go for a fatigue neutral. Depends on how my team looks at that point. If it's still early and this is my first hedge knight, I might just go for a more reliable build. That can be strong right away, like okay, a fat neutral. If I feel like I need some more damage in my team right now, I'm gonna go for two hand cleaver. Okay, I also saw a brawler. A brawler is usually good, right? He has standard attack defense and very good secondary stat. This one, you know. Not the worst. You know, if I find someone without star in 57 early on, that guy will be a stunner. So I think that kind of covered my early game buying. You know, we buy some really expensive hedge knight, we buy some cheap cell sword, we buy some militia who has a lot of potential. We buy a lot of trash bro that we can't, couldn't use, but hey. Those guys can just be mid shield to cover for your good better bros, right? Now imagine that you are the 70, 80, 100 now. And you have a decent amount of money, maybe 15k or floating around in some loot in the backpack too. Now you don't really want to look for things like militia and brawler anymore, right? You want to look for the higher end bros. Now at this point, we don't need play bros anymore. Some of our surviving play bros, some of the good stunner, maybe the thrower, maybe some of the 200, has reached level, you know, 8, 9, 10, 11. They can carry the team now, right? So now we're looking for the better bros. Yeah, we're looking for affordable nobles, household, hedge knight, old takers, things like that. And we're gonna buy every single hunter we see. 
because they are cheap enough, right? Let's see. All right, this town doesn't have anything. Let's pass. So small city like this, you know. Um, we're gonna we're gonna go here, do some contract, buy some trade goods, and that's it. Maybe you buy uh, some anatomies if you like them. They can still make good. Okay, that's a good archer. Good rain skill, good star. Not the best trade ever. Sadly, irrational sucks. But it's fine. You just need to ask it to hit things. So that's awesome. Yeah, won't find much in these small cities. You might grab yourself a monk at some point just for the event, right? Doesn't really matter um, how good they are. But just don't have bad traits, right? Bad traits can trigger bad events. You don't want you don't want bad events. You want good events like the fame crossbow, the caravan event. The drunkard event. Okay, I might still look for thieves at this point if my team is still not that amazing yet. Another hunter. Alright, this guy, if I find early, can be a really good nimble tank or dagger boy, right? And the hunter is not that great. But if you find him early, perfect crossbowman. This old noble, they are kind of bad, but if you luck out and find a really good one, they can become crazy good later. Probably a bad investment. Probably won't pay off most of the time, but hey. If they're cheap enough and you're rich enough, right? why not? Not this one though. So they have a very wide range of roles, right? Their, their resolve can be very low. Their attack can be quite low too. And their defense can go from 0 to 8. But if you roll well with the starting stats and if you have somehow good talent stars too, then, oh boy, okay, then he has a lot of events that can gain him extra, extra stats later. So, might be worth investing in. So, we max roll attack here in 3 stars. Mean roll, mean roll the HP. Decent fatigue, low defense though, and has some initiative. And resolve is not, not the worst, so this is quite a nice one. Right, I can't see myself keeping this one. Look for his events and turn him into a lightning sword bro later. Or <clears throat> if you want to make use of him right now, he can be a great stunner. Usually I build stunner out of plebs, right? But if you find a really good bro, extremely high melee skill, you can build a specialized stunner whose job is to stun champions. Right, we're gonna go for fast adaptation, we're gonna go for backstabber, gifted. We're gonna sacrifice some of the damage perk, we're gonna go tanky, we're gonna go extremely high hit chance. And his job is to make sure that he can stun whatever you want him to stun. Let's sit back down south and see if they have spawned something new. Hey, there's a tournament. Gladiator is a good background. This guy is not that cheap, but... Let's try him out first. Mm, not a bad trade. Maybe I'll buy him. Good attack but no star. Good defense. Only one star. So the star aren't the best. So he can't really be a high end good bro. But he's maybe a low end good bro. And we can go for a tick neutral for him. If your team doesn't have enough frontline but the first bro yet. You know fat neutral is a good way to fill in the ranks. A pretty cheap sword for the mid game. Probably will buy him. And probably will also buy the nomad too. Alright. We got a 10 defense 3 star. Nomad here. Well, he can be a tank, right? Touch, fix its resolve. He can be a tank. Or a dagger too, right? Or a dagger, bro. High defense, some initiative. Low attack is a typical dagger for me. Oh, and we also got this guy. Uh, attack is a bit low, but he does have the stars. Now, for someone like this, right, I, I wouldn't care about the two range skill here. I will just go for, you know... Imagine that they don't exist, right? I'm gonna go for a two-hander, battle forge, maybe fat neutral because right, self so tend to not have the best HP fatigue resolve. A drunkard, but no attack to go with it, so yeah, probably not. So we are in the mid game now. Most of the bro can, you know, do things now. We're not looking for bros that are usable anymore. We are looking for bros that are good and can fill the spot that we are missing. So yeah, those mediocre nomad and sell sword won't make the cut. 
So if you don't find a bro to buy, right, don't worry. Just save up the money. You know, like, it's, at some point, you're going to see three good bros that you want to buy at once. So that's where you spend it. All right. Let's try, try out the Cell Sword. I don't love Cell Sword that much, but, you know, they are usable for sure. Okay. Interesting. Now, this guy is an example where the traits can make up for the stars here. If he hit the stars too, that'd be awesome. But this guy, I might keep him just because of his traits. If you find someone like this quite early, you know, day 60, 70, 80, he will gain enough written level to catch up to the bros with better stars. And his trait might give him an edge too. These are good traits, man. Um, my, my still is two hand cleaver, perhaps. Things like that. Or just fat neutral red axe or something. Okay, let's go to this town. Hey, there's an old taker. You know, you see an old taker that you can afford, you buy the old taker. Also, um, you know, old taker around 5k, adventurous noble maybe below, below 5k. Oh my god, this. <laughs> All right, <laughs> all right. Yeah. Okay, mineral HP, but still good enough. Mineral fatigue. Um. Mineral Resolve, oh my god, 47 Resolve, but very good initiative, not the best, uh, Max Roll Defense, good attack, right, that's a pretty good bro right there, not perfect, but good enough, can be Fencer, you haven't found one, um, I think he's a better Fencer than, than this one, probably better, could be a replacement for Artwin, okay, so when your old taker, right, they low roll the fatigue, you get like this, only 90. Um, we can go Nimble Forge, right? We can go Nimble Forge, may still is Nimble for Forge, two hand cleaver to get more fatigue out of them. All right, let's check out the Advanced Snowball. Oh, okay, so Advanced Snowball, not the best here. Very high um, defense, but no star. Good resolve, two stars, right? So. This can be a replacement banner if you want. If you want to replace the crappy banner that you get early on. So the fatigue neutral, the banner build, they are just a byproduct of the good bros, right? If you if I buy good bros and they can't get there, right? They can still be decent fat neutral or you know, they can still be a banner just fine. So I don't really need to look for banners. They I just find them randomly from just buying bros, right? Okay, so uh let's call that the mid game. Maybe around day 50 to day 100. That's where you really get uh, a lot of money. And that's where you start buying really good bros, right? Gold takers, nobles, knights. And any of them, if they are good, right? Even if they are just a bit short of good. Because you hire them so early, you're going to have more time to level up, get more written levels. So they will still be good later on, right? So I call them the first generation. The first generation are basically this one. Maybe the one around level 20 perhaps. Maybe this one. And they will carry your team through the first crisis all the way to the end game which you want. If you don't want to replace them. Now let's say we are around day 120, 130. We have completed the first crisis. We are in the end of the mid game now. So we got maybe one or two really good stunners remaining from the players. We got a couple high level fat neutral bros here. And you know, we got a decent fencer. We got a couple of fat neutral there. We got a couple of fat fat result there, right? Our team is kind of completed, but we still want to look for a better one to replace these plebs, right? And these fat neutral over here. This is where, right? We start to buy the second generation, I call them. And basically at this point, we'll have enough money to buy whatever we see. If I see a hedge knight, I'll pick them up. If I see an old taker, it doesn't matter the price, I'll pick them up. Unless they look a bit fishy, then I might try them out first to see if they have any bad traits. And then I will buy them, right? Now we are looking for the late game, good bros, and maybe if we're lucky, we're going to stumble into some god bros here. Alright, you see a highborn, you buy a highborn. So because I need to hire a lot of recruits for my endgame team, I don't attack the noble house usually. Let's buy that one. And yep, he's not much at this point. Early on, he could be something. At this point, not really. Ah, 
Yeah, so his melee skill is pretty low, he mineral. His defense is maxed with one star. Yeah. Early on, great bro, at this point. Okay, another nomad. At this point, even nomad aren't that great anymore. They have good attack, right? But their resolve is somewhat low, their defense is somewhat low, so we don't really care about them anymore. But there's still a chance that they have really got like traits, right? What if it went into a huge strong card, you know? So we're looking for traits now, actually. We're looking for highborn with good traits and good stats. So let's say at this point you have to replace all the early on play blocks. Oh, hey, the drunkard. Look at that. We got a drunkard on our archer, which is not ideal, but look at that. Even with drunkard, right? He still have 100 range skill. And drunkard actually increased damage of the bow, of the ranged attack, which um, the huge does not, but drunkard does. And the more people that you send into the obituary, the higher the chance to get drunkard, um, by the way. So. Send it as many bros in there as you can. Ah, why can't I? Any bros, right? Um, for no matter this point, right? Don't buy them anymore. Just try them out, see if they have a good trade worth buying, and then buy them. Otherwise, just leave them be. We don't want a mediocre, decent nomad anymore. We want to like the best nomad might make, make the cuts for us. All right, let's try this guy out. Nope. Let's try this guy out. Nope. I mean, if you have no traits right, and, it's still, and you're still lacking a spot or two, maybe buy them. Eh, not much. Maybe a replacement banner, right? Maybe a better banner than the last one. Okay, Hunter is way too cheap, right? Just buy them and see if they have good range skill. Not much either. Hey, let's try him out. I mean, hey, a brute row. Maybe. The fat can be lost at some point, and maybe we can make a decent two-hand flail. Uh, not really. And I will try to I will try every cultist I see too. If I find a really good frontline cultist, he can become a great madman. And this guy might make the cuts actually. Actually, quite good. Good HP. Cultist has 20 HP difference between the max row and the min row, so. This guy really, really high. Good attack too. Might make the cut as a madman actually. Or a banner cultist if you find one early. Banner cultist is my favorite. So it takes quite a while for the town to re to, to get new recruits. And they don't get a new entire batch of recruits, right? A couple one in the on the top will rotate away and then there's a real couple new one um, rotating in the in the bottom. So what you can do, right? Is to hire every single one. Once you have so much money and you can't find enough people, <clears throat> what you can do is you can hire every single recruit and kick them all, empty this entire thing. And when you come back the next time they get in some new recruit, they're gonna have an entire new full batch, right? You can roll more bros that way. Best do that in some big city that you frequent a lot. If you want to maximize your chance of finding some great bros. I got some bros here. That front just noble. 57 3 star is nice early, but later on it's not much. Basically, it means 67 1 star. Each star is 5 stars, so this guy has the same attack as this guy. Okay, another Hedge Knight 10k. At this point, not a problem. We can try him out. Good trades. Let's get in. And he sucks, right? Yeah, sadly. And, and his start is not at the point where Virgin level can help, so yeah. But he can be a really good banner, I suppose. Super tanky, high fatigue, good attack, pretty good, good defense too. Might be a, an endgame banner. Let's try out the gladiator. Honestly, you're right. Um, short sighted is not that bad. Who knows? He could have nine stars, but who knows? Eh, not really. <laughs> yeah, the map can't respawn bro fast enough for me. So maybe. We will do the buy everyone and then kick them thing. Okay, I never heard that before. <laughs> Haven't fought anything in a long time. People get upset. All right. Well, there's some nice bro here. Let's check them out. Wait, I should try them out first. Hey, a huge bro with decent HP, zero defense because of huge though. If he has good attack and has huge, 
then you can do a lot of damage. So I quite like this one. The thing is, right, zero defense in minus 10 is not really suited for front line, right? So maybe a worse size point the bike. Yeah, let's buy everyone and then kick them. All right, we hire everyone and then we, we kick them all. This town is empty now, but let's see how long it takes for it to restock. Ah, just take about four days maybe. And I have a new badge now, but okay, they got a hitch knight, a cheap one to put that. Some pretty cheap stuff here, so. Okay, terrible hitch knight, get out. Well, this guy will be decent early on, but this point, right, doesn't make the cut anymore. So yeah, so you can um, do, you can buy everyone and then kick them all, empty the town to look for new, for more recruits. To choose a good city with maybe barrack. And that is some way that you go through a lot, right? I can go here by everyone, right? Empty the town and then go down here, do arena for, you know, a couple of days. Come back in maybe four or five days or so. Get a new batch, empty them up. And go this way, do contracts maybe. Come back and then you know, empty the town again, you know. Go there, boat up there, do some contract up there. Five days from now, I go back and look for more recruits. That's how you can look for recruits if you have a lot of money. All right, I think that's about it. Yeah, to summarize, you know, early on we go for the plebs, right? Um, and the pleb can help to carry you all the way to the mid game. And in the mid game, you look for some higher end background and make them into some better builds. And once you have a full team of decent bros, you're gonna start replacing some of the players with some of the better bros, right? And you're gonna try to look for the god bros too. Anything else that don't make the cut, right? You feed them to the meat god, <laughs> right? Throw them to the wolves. Feed, put them into obituary. Get some more drunkard in there, right? Uh, you know, a, a high end good bro or a good bro that you find early enough. If you get drunkard for them, right? From all the dead bros, they can enter the god tier territory. Alright, so that's how I like to recruit the bros and build the team. I like to go for about 300 days, so we have the time to find some really good ones. You can go longer, find even more god bros, or you can go, you know, shorter and try to beat the game with the mid-tier blow bros and the players. Alright, I hope you enjoyed the video, I hope it helps. I will link my build video over there, so you can go and check out all this build and see how the bros can fit them. Alright, thank you for watching. I will see you in the next one. Peace out. See ya.